Good evening, internets. This is me, D.P. Knuton, for another edition of Bookward Bound. 301 days from I should really do this to done. And what is that done that I'm talking about? It's a brand new book called, and you actually saw the uh, uh, cover art a second ago, Bookward Bound is all about the creation of a new book called Nonfiction Brand, Discovering, Crafting, and Communicating the Completely True, Completely You Brand You Already Are. So that's what I'm doing here tonight. Bookward Bound is all about that journey from, I should really do this book, to it's done and it's up, ready for purchase on Amazon. And um, it started on March 5th of 2020, just a couple months ago. But actually, tonight is episode 94, meaning I've done 94 consecutive live streams progressing my book forward toward that publication date of January 1st, 2021. Or actually, it's not a publication date so much as I'm uploading the files. I'm Who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll upload those files early. But my hard deadline is press-ready PDFs have to be uploaded to Amazon Kindle Direct Sp- Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing's platform, sorry, uh, by January 1st, 2021. And you are helping keep me honest by making me come down here on a Sunday after I've already jo- enjoyed one mojito. And this is mojito nombre dos. Um so there might be some interesting typos in tonight's episode, but c'est la vie, right? Anyway, so what am I going to be doing tonight? Um, well, you know, I'm really inspired because today, earlier today, I checked out on Netflix this. Hold on a second. Brene Brown, a call, The Call to Courage. And if you don't know Brene Brown, you need to fix that right away because you, you may have seen her TED Talks on vulnerability and shame. Um, her performance in this, which came out in 2019, is fantastic. So much so that I watched it this morning while working out. And then I watched it again just now with my family because I, I said, you guys have just got to see this. Because she is so fantastic. And the funny thing is, I'm already writing about her in this book. So I'm going to pull up where that might be. I, I've, I actually have written about her a couple of different places. I refer to her briefly, I think, right in the be- beginning. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, focus on your expertise. Uh, yeah, I write about her right there, Brene Brown, blah, 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 in the section MD, CPA, PhD, E-I-E-I-O. I write about her quite significantly. Yeah. And even give you URLs to her TED Talks. And now I need to pull this in as well. So Netflix.com. Oh, I'll just refer to it. Um, I think I referred to her. Read more about that. In okay. So where's the other Brene Brown part? But anyway, I, I'm saying you got to check out. Brene Brown, because she's so flippin' fabulous. And I love Sweet Georgia Brown. That's not it. The name Sweet Brown Bubbly Water. That's not it. Maybe I should be typing in Brene. Binge watch. Our vulnerability, 47 million views. Um, I refer to her 
also, I wrote about her being in the Netflix wine country. The combo of shame. Is her niche and boy, how she's been able to capitalize it, on it. But only because it comes, it comes from. An absolutely authentic place with in herself. Oh, one last thing. She's a self-confessed introvert. One last thing. She's a self-confessed introvert. Do I talk about her being an introvert? Uh, if she can do it, comma, so can you. All right, so I'm going to leave that. Yeah, I'm going to need to read this book through from beginning to end one of these days. Oh, Lordy. So I am looking through. Hold on. I got a monitor problem. That's messing up. Hopefully not on your end. Well, it shouldn't mess up on your end. Restoring windows. All right, there's Brene. It's, um, all right. So last night I was doing some writing in a section. And I can't remember what section it was. No, I do. It was about Dana Sanchez. Now, uh, I do the Nonfiction Brand Podcast. It comes out every Monday. And this Monday, tomorrow, this Monday's episode is with Dana Sanchez. And I was uh, editing the second half of a two-part ep uh, episode. One part aired last Monday. The second part airs tomorrow. And so part of my strategy on writing this book is using or featuring the people that have been on my podcast because I've had a chance to really get to know them and plumb the depths of their personal brand. So I'm, I'm using them as um, kind of case studies for why you should be personal branding. And in the case of Dana, I got to find out what section that's in. The worst day of her life. There you go. The worst day of her life. The dream business she never knew she wanted. Da, 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 748 words. Um, let 
but be prepared for at least a couple of minutes. I, I like it better just and hold for the laugh. And does she miss her old job? Just ask her and hold for the laugh. But hold for the laugh. All right, so this I've gone through and uh, I've given it over here. You can see it's got a blue flag. That blue flag is actually a signal to me. Hold on while I do this. I'm opening up restream.io's restream chat. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask and I'll be able to see them and answer them in real time. Um, but anyway, I gave it a blue flag, meaning I think this section's done. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to read through it. The, and by the way, I'm literally going to read through it. So bear with me. Because uh, again, you, if you're a regular watcher of Bookward Bound, you know that I read it aloud because one, um, I'm a trained actor. And so I learned a long time ago that good writing doesn't trip you up when it has to come out of your mouth. So I kind of have always embraced that technique to double check my writing. I love a very vocal style. It should be able to be, uh, a sentence should be able to be read without a breath in the midst of it, unless you give it a comma or set it up with a, a kind of br a, a comma to give you a cue that here I'm laying out one point and I'm following it up. You know, breathing is very musical um, and I like musical prose. You know, the type of stuff that sounds like it's uh, actually being spoken rather than read. So, here we go. The worst day in her life, the dream business she never knew she wanted. It was one of those days that went from bad to worse to existentially catastrophic. Dana Sanchez was the number two sales rep at a small market radio station in Missouri, USA. It was the kind of place where the title sales rep was more or less a joke because she performed the function of a sales rep, but also a copy, but also copywriter, radio commercial producer, and account executive for a portfolio of around 25, I'm going to put the word around, of around 250 clients. Unfortunately, her completely kind and bubbly personality landed her right in the middle of a shooting war between two rival car dealerships. From what she could later learn, one dealer hired a valued employee from the other dealer. Um, uh, I'm going to do the dealer A thing. Dealer A... Uh, from, from dealer B. When dealer B accused dealer A of poaching said employee, they said, no, we'd never do such a thing. But we were looking for a new associate and, and we had a mutual friend, Dana. Now, Dana never introduced the two parties, recommended the hire, or did anything to broker the deal. But when Dealer B pulled all advertising from the radio station, the station manager did what he thought he had to do to try to repair the relationship Dis uh, relationship with dealer, with dealer B. Dismissed Dana immediately. Quite frankly, Dana was completely innocent and just collateral damage in a stupid turf war. But she had kids to feed, a mortgage to pay, and suddenly a completely uncertain future. But she all... Scary. Scary. Very scary... For sure, comma, but she had something that trumped all that. 
a de facto personal brand with around 250 fans just waiting to hear about her next move. You can hear all about what she did next in episodes 93 and 94 of the Nonfiction Brand Podcast, but the point I really want to make here that I really want to make is that her completely true, completely you brand was already in play working on her behalf and she didn't even know it. How? Even though she was summarily marched out of the door after cleaning out her desk on the first day of her ninth year at the radio station, she didn't want to leave her clients in the dark about what happened Didn't wanted to make sure they understood that they would be well taken care of. Yeah, she's that great. And that level of customer care is absolutely core to her personal brand. You can tell because even though she had been gut punched out of the blue, she immediately went into customer service mode, trying to save client relationships for the radio station. Author side note, I definitely would not have had the grace to do that. The brand she didn't know she had built the business she didn't know she wanted. If you had asked Dana on days 1 through 20 of her what do I new, do now situation, uh, if she had a brand, uh, that's awkward. If you had asked Dana on days 1 through 20 of her what do I do now situation if she had a brand, I'm 100% certain she would have replied with an emphatic no. But the reality was she did, and her former port portfolio of clients knew it. Knew knew it and knew it knew all about it as she met with them to explain what happened the inevitable question arose of what are you going to do now her response would be something like what i'd really like to do is what i did for you when it comes to radio but ex also expand beyond that to include uh, the complete range of traditional uh the complete or uh let's go uh include a complete range of traditional and new media channels to give people like you a complete marketing solution. Her answer was completely factual. Their reaction was unexpected. Some, and more than one, clients, some, and more than one, old, Some clients, let's do that. Let's go. Some clients Yeah, some clients. How about and way more than one. Some clients and way more than one said, "Why don't you do that for us?" And so Clipboard Confidence was born and is now as of tw and is now as of 2020, too many commas. One of the big things you should do is always look for commas. Get rid of them if you don't need them. But I am a fan of the Oxford comma. Now, okay, this is where I get to go a little pedantic on you. The Oxford comma is considered passe by modern grammarians of all sorts, but a lot of people like me love it when it affects what you're trying to say. The example I always give is in uh, legal terms. Just think of it this way. I have just passed away, and I say, divide my estate equally between Tom, Dick, and Harry. If I say Tom, comma, Dick, and Harry, Tom gets 50%, and Dick and Harry get 50%. If I say Tom, comma, Dick, comma, and Harry, each gets a third. All of a sudden, Tom doesn't get that extra, you know, what, 18%. He gets 33 and a third percent, just like the other three. C, the Oxford comma. And by the way, lawyers know this. And treaties, you know, border treaties with countries have hinged on the grammar of the treaty. And there are still some really weird things that have happened in, in world international politics and, you know, um, statecraft, I guess, you know, border disputes, all that stuff that hinge on the placement of a comma. So I love me some Oxford commas. However, there is such a thing as too many commas. So that's why I took one out here. Some clients and way more than one said, why don't you do that for us? And so clipboard confidence was born and is now as of 
2020 in its 10th, it's, ooh, not it is, its 10th year of success. See, this is why you got to go through and read it closely. As I said, had you talked to Dana shortly after being ushered out the door about her brand, she'd likely laugh or maybe ugly cry in your face. But now, just take a look at her website, clipboardconfidence.com. Go ahead and deconstruct it, and you'll see that she has completely identified em and embraced and embraced the who she is and is being it every single day, every single day interaction in social media post. Uh, every single day and social media post. What you see is what you get, and even her website copy reflects it. Her tagline, smart business marketing that doesn't suck, is not some flaccid focus group certified lowest common denominator gruel. It's just a sampling of the salsa caliente you can expect to be sir you can expect her to be serving up every time you interact with her. Dana knows who she is, she is and is being it. Okay, I'm going to give that some bold. And does she miss her old job? Just ask her, but hold for the laugh. Just ask her long dash all right, so why comma, why a long dash instead of a comma? Because a comma is, I say this and then, I just wanted you to stop for a second. But I say this and then, I wanted you to hold for a little bit longer. I give it a long dash, a little bit more heat. A comma divides, but a long dash accentuate that, accentuates that which follows. It's my favorite punctuation mark. And by the way, there is no space before or after a long or M dash. In fact, I'm going to look that up because I just want to verify that. M dash usage. Uh, da, 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 da. Punctuation guide. The dash is less formal than a colon after months of blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. Yes, do not mistake the M dash for the slightly narrower N dash. An M dash, an M dash is the width of an M. An N dash is the width of an N. All right, so you can see right there. Dashes are considered less formal than parentheses. They are also more intrusive. Exactly. If you want to draw attention to the parenthetical comment, use dashes. So no space before or after. Coolio. Yeah. M dash, my favorite form of punctuation. All right. So, where are we? I think this section is pretty good. Oh, that mojito is good, but she poured it a little strong. By the way, do you like your mojitos with white rum? Or golden rum or dark rum. Not not the darkest rum. Not Captain Morgan, that type of stuff. But I'm talking Mount Gay Barbados rum. Oh, yeah. Mount Gay rum from Barbados. Excelente. Muy excelente. Uh, okay, I'm going to give this a green flag of doneness. Yay. Okay. So, Leah Bach, I want to write about her, but I haven't cut her episodes yet, so I think I'll wait. What I do need to do is make a note in here. Um, I'm going to put pull quote. Since I have her verbatim, I can pull a section where she talks about this stuff and bring it in here, put quotes on it, give it some italics, and it just adds a little bit of uh, authoritativeness to the copy because it's not me talking about her. It's her talking 
about herself. And, you know, especially when you can get named people that people know in your book, it just elevates your book a little bit. Plus, it shows that you're having these conversations with them, which elevates you a little bit, you know, and uh, someone like Dana is, you know, more like me, a, a smaller market provider of services. But some of the people I'm talking to are significantly higher up the ladder or flying at what I like to call they're flying at a higher altitude. By having them in the book, it brings my altitude a little bit closer to, the, to theirs. And people will assume rightly or wrongly that I'm their peer rather than their supplicant. I would always rather be someone's peer than their, I really like you. You're really cool. I love your book. I don't mind saying, hey, I really love your book, but I like it peer to peer level. That's just me. You got to own it, baby. And you got to watch that uh, Brene Brown episode that I, I talked about earlier. Um, this is not going to be a long episode tonight because, frankly, I want to get my mojito on outside because it's a beautiful night. But I do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me and keeping me honest and making me come down here when I, d I really don't want to. I got a little bit done on my book. I was able to take it from, uh, take a section from blue, not quite done, to green. Yay, it's done, which is a huge thing toward getting this book done. And I've just taken a bite out of the elephant that is creating a book and producing it yourself and publishing it yourself. So now I got to chew that piece. You don't need to watch me chew, so I'm going to let you go. But I do want to say thank you. Also, don't forget the Nonfiction Brand Podcast comes out tomorrow. Uh, and it's an episode with Dana Sanchez, who I was just writing about in the book. So check that out. Get to know her because she's really fun, really honest, really authentic. One of those people that I know is going to be in my orbit for a long, long time. And I hope I'm in her orbit as long as she can stomach me. And anyway, that's it for tonight. So I'm going to say good night. So check out the podcast. I'll see you here tomorrow. Theme music. Take us on out. So there we go. I'll see you tomorrow.